What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I want to do a little bit of video real quick. Um, I just got back from making a run and I've got a deal supposedly lined out on a new trailer. So this may be the last time you see this 99 Transcraft here that I have. I backed it in the shop here so that I could uh, get some tools and stuff rounded up for my license plates. It's raining outside so I'll be able to remove my license plates. I don't know, uh, they should have that, but you know how that is when you go somewhere to buy something. Uh, it's best just to take your own stuff, that way you are uh, ready to go, and don't have to wait on them and all that good stuff. I'm gonna show the trailer one last time, and then tomorrow, I guess, if you guys see this video and it's posted, I guess we'll have a new trailer, or we'll still have the same trailer here. One more thing I need to do before I leave. I've already got my wrenches to take off my license plates. If I buy this other trailer, if the deal goes through, if you don't try nothing squirrely with me, um, is if you guys remember uh, a few months back or whatever, I put a, a lube plate on my fifth wheel, that big circular disc I put up under there um, that you don't have to put any grease on. I'm gonna leave that on here because I don't wanna get all nasty taking it off. And you know, it's got some wear in it. I'll put a new one on the new trailer or whatnot to keep it from wearing and not having to use grease. But in the meantime, I need to get uh, a tube of grease over here for the new trailer because I don't want to hook it up dry until I can make it home and get another uh, fifth with this. He may have one of those up there. He probably does. But uh, I don't know. He probably charged me to put it on, and I'm not going to put it on it there in the parking lot probably. I'll just uh, put some grease on it latch onto it most likely. But anyway, I want to take a tube of grease with me um, just for that reason. All right, guys, quick little video of the new trailer here we're picking up. And it's pouring down rain, so it's going to be a real quick video here. But I've got the other one over here I'm dropping off beside it. And this is a new one. All right, guys. So I have made it back, and we do have a new trailer. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the salesman, about the trailer difference between this and a Dorsey. I also weighed my old trailer whenever I uh, dropped it off. And I weighed the new trailer when I picked it up. I didn't disconnect the trailer and weigh, you know, just the trailer, just the truck, but I weighed empty with my old trailer and empty with the new trailer. And uh, I will post a picture of the scale ticket on the end of this video for those of you who want to look at it and look at my individual axle weight ratings. But roughly, uh, this trailer is about 1,500 pounds lighter. So uh, we'll start with that. But as I say, for those of you nerds who want to look at the individual axle ratings and stuff, um, I'll post that on the end of the video and you can pause it and look and research and see what the difference is. But uh, this is a 2022 model Transcraft Eagle 554. The 554 is the main beam ratings, 55,000 pounds and a four foot span. Um, this trailer is real similar to the Dorsey that I looked at, the Dorsey that I looked at was a 2020 model. And the deal with these trailers is, is these trailers were both ordered the 2020 Dorsey and this 2022 Transcraft Eagle was both ordered before the price increase. There's been about a 10% price increase on these trailers. And so both of these trailers were ordered before the price increase. This came from a different dealer than the one that had the Dorsey. The only difference in the specs on the trailers is uh, this trailer does not have a coil package. Um, I do not haul coils, so that is not a big deal. If I would have been, I kind of wanted that just because it helps resale value, but I thought that this trailer here was about six or 700 bucks cheaper than the 2020 model Dorsey. So my thought was this is a 2022 model the two years newer is going to give me a better resale than having the coal package because there's a lot of people that don't haul coals. Uh, in fact, most people don't want to haul coals uh, that I've talked to. Um, you can still haul a coal on a trailer without a coal package. It's not a deal killer. It just makes it easier and the trailer holds up a little bit better from what I understand uh, if you're going to haul coals every day. But if you're just going to pick up a coal for a backhaul, you know, you could still use this trailer. But again, I don't haul coal, so it's not that big a deal. Um, the other thing is, uh, with the coil package on the Dorsey, it had the, uh, the pull-out chains in the uh, side here that you pulled up on it and there was a chain you could secure to. Um, again, that's not a big deal. You still have your pipe spools here and whatnot. 
Uh, I don't use chains, I use straps, all building products, lumber, that sort of stuff. Uh, so that's not that big of a deal. Um, without the coil package is probably why this trailer was a little bit cheaper because that's about how much extra a coil package would add. Um, and basically what that consists of is in the center of your trailer right here, if you ever look at a trailer with a coil package, your cross members up under the bottom will be closer together. Uh, these are on one foot centers, but on a trailer with a coil package, your, uh, your cross members right here in the center in a four foot section will be closer together in this one area. Um, that and you have the, most of them have the pull out you know, for securing the coil too, but you can just use the, uh, the uh, chain spools there if you need to haul a coil. And really, I mean, your coils are sitting on, on uh, you know, four by four cribbing and stuff anyway, you know, wedged in there. So the actual coil is not sitting on the trailer deck. You're gonna have uh, four by fours or something going across the full width of your deck to support that coil weight anyway. So again, if you wanted to haul a coil as a back haul, you still could, so it's not a deal killer. Um, the other thing is, and I don't know how I feel about this, but this is what the trailer had. Again, it was a little cheaper. Um, not having the coil package made it that way, I suppose. And it also uh, probably made the trailer a couple of hundred pounds lighter, which that benefits me actually more than the coil package would. But uh, it has grease hubs. These are the HXL5 Hendrickson. Uh, they're filled with semi-fluid grease. They're supposed to be a five-year warranty. That's what the five stands for. I have no experience with these hubs. Uh, I would love to hear in the comments, you guys that's run them, if you've had good luck with them, but they're supposed to be a maintenance-free five-year warranty. You're not supposed to have to touch it. It's got a label on it that says, uh, you know, don't mess with it, call Hendrickson and uh, talk to them about it. But basically, from what I read on the internet, you're not supposed to have to mess with it for five years or half a million miles. Um, so that's quite a while away. But I really don't like the idea that you can't check it. You know, I like the kind of like the rubber plug ones with the uh, takes the gear oil that you can at least check and see what's in there. Because I do know one guy that had a Fontaine trailer that has these on them. This is what Fontaine uses as well. And he did have a bearing go out in his, but I think his trailer was probably seven or eight years old at the time. And, uh, you know, he had never checked it, never done any maintenance on it. So I don't know. Hopefully it's a. Uh, it's an okay system. Um, it's got the aluminum camlock toolbox on it with aluminum brackets, which that's okay. I would have rather had a stainless toolbox, but this is how this trailer was specced, and I wasn't willing to pay any more for the extra. You know, if it hadn't had a box on it, if I was going to buy a box, I would have bought the stainless one. But this is how this trailer was specced on the lot. I already had a box. The Dorsey did not. The Dorsey had to have a box added. But with the box added, the Dorsey was going to be about 700 bucks more expensive or somewhere thereabouts. And uh, again, it was a two-year-old trailer compared to this one. And what got me thinking was if I decide to sell this trailer in, uh, you know, two, three, five years, whatever, this trailer being two years newer on the title uh, would make up a little bit of resale value there. So I decided to go with this right here. Um, this trailer was supposed to have a dump valve. It has a plug up there for the dump valve, and I'll show you that in a minute. It does not actually have a dump valve under there, um, which my truck is not wired for a dump valve. My old truck was, and I was going to wire this one. I just never got around to it. It's rarely that I use that, and it's not a deal killer. I can add the dump valve. The wiring is already there. It's run from the front to the front of this toolbox, basically, and curled up. Uh, so the wire's there. You just got to add a solenoid and, and plumb it in. <clears throat> not the end of the world, uh, but he did tell me it did have a dump valve and it does not. So that's a little bit frustrating. Other things a little bit frustrating is they go over this trailer and they charge you a fee to do a DOT inspection there at the dealer. And nobody has bothered to put a grease gun on the S cams or the slack adjusters. And I know that because it still has paint on it where they painted it from the factory. And I'll show you that. We're going to get up onto the trailer there in a minute and uh, show you around. Uh, what the bottom side of it looks like nobody ever does that and uh, so i have the opportunity to do that here because i got it here in the shop and uh, we'll get up in there check it out and then i'm going to grease it and whatnot and i'm going to add a couple more ratchets because these only come with 12 ratchets uh switch most trailers the dorsey was the same way and uh i like a minimum of 14. i've had i have three more i'm going to add 
So we're going to have 15. That's what I had on my other trailer as well. Um, so we'll go get that done. I like mine on the driver's side. This trailer does have the rail on both sides. So if you like yours on the passenger side, you can simply uh, take them off and move them that way. Um, this trailer also has the aluminum. They spec it with aluminum be between the uh, axles here. It dresses up, makes it look a little cleaner. Um, I think this trailer has a little nicer uh, badging, the Transcraft badging and stuff than the Dorsey. Uh, just my personal opinion. I think the mud flaps, the way the mud flaps come all the way up to the bottom of the lighting, the Dorsey had a little a bracket here that comes off and you had a gap between the top of the bracket and there. I think the way the Transcraft in the back uh, looks is a little bit better. So I guess we will uh, get up under here and I will show you guys around the bottom side of it and we'll talk a little bit more about that situation. Another thing, if I had about if I was going to buy this trailer new, I would have asked about, well, I did buy this trailer new, but I mean, if I was going to order it new, is the uh, the lift axle. I would like to hear your guys' opinions on that. They make a, they do make a kit. Uh, Henderson makes a kit, and I think it bolts on right here, because there's holes right here. Um, I think it just bolts on. I'm not sure how the bottom side bolts to the arm here, but it's basically, it's a bracket and a uh, airbag here, and it pushes this axle backwards. I don't know exactly what the kit cost or if it's even beneficial um, to do do so. I don't know what type of mileage gains you would see. So if you guys have swapped and, and put that kit on or got a trailer that was pretty much the same weight with the lift axle, I'd like to hear uh, what you know your thoughts is on it, if it's even worthwhile. I mean, if it was a cheap, you know, sub $1,000 that I could do that, and if it would increase my uh, mileage enough to make it worthwhile, um, I would consider doing that. If not, then I won't worry about it because um, I never had one on my other one. It's not that big a deal. But uh, this is how the trailer was specced. And as I say, if I would have custom ordered another trailer, it would have been a 10% premium over this one. So this is kind of what I had to go with, you know, and uh, make do from there. So that is something I'm curious about though. Is it worth, I see some trailers that have that. I'm just curious, is it worth doing that for when you're running back empty and stuff from dropping a load off? Is it worth spending the money, the extra money on that to, uh, to save some fuel and a little tire wear? I don't know how much it saves on tire wear either. Um, I guess, you know, you would save this with these, this axle, but it may actually save on some of the tire wear on the other one running back empty because, you know, it's not scrubbing as much because this one's off the ground. But I don't know. I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on that as well. And uh, we'll hop up under here and I will show you guys under the bottom some of the differences. Talk about some of the differences I've seen in this one and my old trailer and whatnot, as well as show you the dump valve and stuff that is not there that I was told it was. Okay, the first things you will notice is the newer trailers, most all these trailers, the Dorsey was built really similar. Uh, they have this, uh, what they call the K brace right here. This is supposed to keep the, uh, the trailer from cracking and bending because uh, these spread axles take a lot of abuse back here in this area. And so that's supposed to help prevent some of that. Other thing you will notice is the uh, spring hangers or the bushing hanger, whatever you want to call these. This is a narrow bushing. This is what I've seen all the trailers go to now. My old trailer had the Hendrickson wide bushings, which were welded on the outside of the frame right here, and they come straight down, and it put a lot of stress on the outside of this beam here, and it would crack across here. And they also did not have these stifters. I did add some of these stifters on my other trailer to help, um, but the as I say, this was a wider piece right here had a wider bushing in here and this bracket was flush right here and welded right here and it would break uh on, i think i don't know that there was only maybe one of them that hadn't cracked but it would crack in there and whatnot and uh the cross members up under here are a lot taller on the newer trailers um as you see here these go all the way almost to the top of the beam and there's three of them uh, right across here as you can see the old trailer I had the old Transcrafts were not like that the those only come up to about here so you had the whole top of this beam here that was unsupported basically 
and uh, that would allow it to start cracking because you didn't have near the weld that you did there and they would break loose all the way down the side um, all of them when I bought my trailer it was like that had it welded up it had been welded several times and uh, it's just a complete mess in the way, the way that they designed it and uh, my other trailer had also started to crack around the uh, where the cross members went through and stuff so uh, you know it's time to get something a little better and uh, hopefully this trailer is going to hold up well for me the uh, dump valve issue that I'm referring to this trailer has the leveling valve on the rear axle my other trailer had it on the front axle um, I don't think that'll make a whole lot of difference for what I would do because the only time I use the uh, dump valve anyway when I had it on my other truck is the rare occasion that I had to park at a uh, big truck stop say a Loved or somewhere where you had to back in a tight area um, with other trucks it did not it does not work well with a spread axle you cannot back these in a tight area like that um, hardly without a dump valve it puts a lot of strain on the trailer uh, you can eventually get it but it it puts a lot of strain on the trailer and uh, it's a little bit hard but uh, I usually try to find somewhere that's not crowded or there's a big enough spot you know it, a smaller truck stop may have two or three spots beside one another you can back into a lot easier than you're trying to back into a single spot somewhere and if it's on a gravel parking lot it's a whole lot better than if it's on a asphalt or concrete but uh, as you see here's the dump not the dump valve but the leveling valve and the airline comes from the leveling valve and goes over into the airbags there this is the rear airbags it comes around here cut tees off of there and then it goes up to the front airbags right there tees across so there is no dump valve so and if I wanted to put a dump valve and you're not really supposed to have a switch in the truck unless it can be disabled above 10 miles an hour per DOT I don't want somebody running down the road that forgets to uh, you know flip the switch and then you have an axle overloaded uh, but you could uh, I guess unplug the uh, wire from the front of the trailer or whatever when you was not using it because as I say the only time that I would need it is a rare occasion that I would back in a spot you know and uh, or make a 90 degree turn somewhere uh, in, a, in a truck stop parking lot or a lumber yard something like that I've never needed a valve on the road but anyway all you would have to do would be to run this airline here over here cut this line put a T in it and then uh, take this over here and mount your dump valve here on the rear cross member there and basically the dump valve what it does is it takes the uh, electrical solenoid or electrical yeah electrical sil solenoid and when it goes hot you want a normally open solenoid so that air flows through it um, when it's normally open when you apply 12 volts to it it will close it will block off this line here just like if you took a pair of pliers here and pinch this off and it will exhaust the other side over here so it will dump these bags and it will close this side off that would be going to the front bags if you see what I'm saying but you would have to have your leveling valve line come in in front of your solenoid so you'd have to put a 90 degree fitting here where that T is at take the T out put a 90 run this airline over to a T here and then your solenoid would go behind that and then um, as I say they already have the wiring up there for it right in front of this toolbox and uh, you can add um, some auxiliary lights and stuff if you want to see there's the uh, there's the wires right there they go to the front of the trailer they just have them curled up right here as I say and uh, but this trailer is a lot more I guess open slash whatever I'm looking for it seems to be uh, the other one had a couple braces going across down through there and whatnot and it had uh, where those cross members there about six inches tall my other trailer just had small pieces of pipe that went across up there and as I say, it did not have these wide of a cross members that go all the way to the top like they should have years ago. So hopefully this one will hold up a little bit better. 
and not uh not start to crack and whatnot they do have a lifetime limited warranty whatever that means on the main beams to the first owner so i am the first owner because i'm buying it new or whatever so uh anywho that's what the bottom side of it looks like again and uh I still want to know some opinions on those on the lift axle deal if that's something worth considering and i don't know if you have to have the abs module reprogrammed to do that or not um you guys can leave that in the comments as well tell me on that this trailer does have the uh extended service shoes you can see uh how thick the pad is there so I should not have to put brakes on this for a very long time. They did have some trailers that had disc brakes on them. Uh, it's an extra $3,300, $3,500, something like that. I forget. Maybe it's a little over three grand um, for disc brakes. Um, but I did not see that I needed that because I usually on a standard service shoe would get 200,000 miles. So this has the extended service shoe. So... I'm guessing I'd get 300,000. Uh, I try not to use the brakes a lot until somebody cuts me off or, uh, you know, if I'm going somewhere and don't know exactly where I'm going, uh, come up on an exit too quick and have to. But if I know where I'm going and know the exit I'm taking ahead of time, I start trying to slow down and gear down so I'm not so hard on the brakes. But as you see here, they did not bother to, uh, to grease the slack adjusters or the S-cam. And I guess there's only one alamite here, or grease zerk, as you guys call it. Alamite is actually the brand, but whatever. Uh, the other trailer had uh, one up here, I believe, and it was it was a little different design. It had one in this bearing here, and then you slack adjuster, so you had three per wheel instead of two per wheel. But uh, these greased hubs have an axle vent instead of having the... Uh, the vent out there on the uh wheel end where the rubber cap is they vent here so anyway i don't know if it's uh i'm sure some people's converted these back to uh oil i'm thinking all you have to do is to change the cap on them you guys can let me know that in the comment as well on changing if i wanted to change that if i keep this trailer a long time and think it's going to be an issue if i wanted to just uh Convert it back to the oil style because I think the only difference is the cap, honestly. There may be a difference in the wheel seal, I'm not sure. So this is the front of the trailer right here and you can see this uh, second seven way plug right here. And see, I seen that and I figured for sure it had a dump valve on it. I asked the salesman, oh yeah, it's got a dump valve on it. Got home and uh, got the inspecting up on there because I wanted to back into the shop and, and uh, grease it or if it hadn't been greased and uh it doesn't so that's a little bit aggravating but again it's not to the end of the world and uh so it's a little dark out here but let's see the side of it there 554 and it does have the lights inside here and uh these are dual function they also uh blink whenever you the turn signal i think it has five five of these down the side there so let me know on uh, your thoughts on the hubs and uh, if you've ever converted them back to grease, I think all you may have to do is just swap the cap and obviously you'd have to take it apart and clean all that apart. But I wouldn't do that until several years from now. And uh, you know, when I had to go in and pack them and whatnot like you're supposed to. But uh, I think I'm gonna take, you know, pay more attention to these and kind of lay my hand on to make sure they're not getting hot it just it worries me that you can't uh you can't see inside of there like you can with the old ones you know you can obviously see if you have a problem with the old ones but uh i guess this is a common setup and that's what most all the newer trailers are coming with so that's what it is it's supposed to be better i don't know and another thing is i would say lift axle let me know what you guys think on that if it's worth it if you get two or three tenths better mile per gallon if it's not even noticeable um whatever your thoughts are i don't know i don't want to spend money on it and then uh, find out it doesn't help a darn thing but that's a decent looking trailer and uh, i guess i'll find out more about it whenever i go pick up a load 
and uh, get some use out of it. So we'll see how that goes. I will probably do another video for those of you who are interested in the, uh, the financing and stuff and how that exactly all worked out. This is the, uh, the box, the Camelot box. And I don't keep a lot of stuff in the box. It is nice as this one's a little bit bigger than the other one because I always had uh, trouble with my uh, my tarp straps there getting tangled up with my straps. Um, looks like they still made, but not as bad. A lot more room in there. A little nicer box. My other one, somebody hit it with a forklift the other day. I'm sure somebody did the same thing with this one. And uh, they bent it a little bit. I was not too upset about it because I was planning on getting another trailer anyway and I uh, straightened it back out it was just on the edge but hopefully nobody will hit this one I'm sure they will though because it sticks out further if you look down the side of it those uh those forklift drivers they don't pay real good attention sometimes so anyway that's a walk around of the new trailer I hope I made the right decision um, I guess time will tell on that I did look at some other used trailers um, the best deal that I found, I found a 2012 model Transcraft for sale. Um, I think I could have bought it for 12 grand. I did not talk to the guy, but I did read the uh, listing and I did actually drive by it. I was delivering a load and I actually did drive by the thing sitting on the shoulder of the road there uh, where it was parked at and uh, seen the for sale sign on it. And uh, what got me is... Uh, the time you spend twelve thousand on it, it being two thousand twelve model, you don't know what it was used for, how badly fatigued the trailer is. In the listing, it said there were some minor cracks in the suspension area. Well, I already had that issue with my other trailer. I didn't want that again. Something else to work on. Um, you know, it's possible it needed S cam bushes. As I say, I did not go and look at the trailer, uh, didn't stop and look at it or whatever. It was gonna need tires before the end of the year. So if you add that three grand to it, you'd have been at 15,000 plus uh, whatever else that needed S cam bushes or any slack adjusters, any of that sort of stuff. Been very easy to be in that thing at 16, $17,000. And uh, you know, you got a trailer that if you already have to start welding on it, you know what's it going to turn into the next four or five years and the resale value time you weld on it and it breaks and you weld on it and breaks i just didn't want to get into that all the other trailers i looked at were uh you know low 20s and uh stuff so i figured it wasn't that much more of a stretch uh being a you know financing and everything and a five-year payout to go ahead and get a new one it's got warranty on it it's unlikely i will need the warranty uh, warranty at least hope not but at least i know i got a trailer brand new from day one that I know how many miles on it. it's got new tires on it you know um, you know it's got new slack adjusters the whole nine yards I can grease that stuff myself from day one and make it last a lot longer and uh, not be buying somebody else's wore out junk that they did not bother to uh, you know do maintenance on they just pulled it for however many years and then now they're going to sell it and then I would have to get it and rebuild it and uh, you know, I just decided to go ahead and get the, go ahead and bite the bullet and get the brand new one. So uh, that's what I did. Hopefully it's the right decision. As I say, time will tell. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Uh, again, on the grease hubs and on the uh, lift axle option, if that's something I should consider or whatever. And uh, I'll throw that scale receipt uh, printout on there. Uh, when I weighed this trailer and the other trailer, you guys can check out the weight differences and stuff. So uh, I'll do that. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.